I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Today I'd like to talk about the next chapter in this story. A little more than 40 years ago, astronauts descended the nine-rung ladder of the lunar module called Eden. And the question for us now is whether that was the beginning of something or the end of something. I choose to believe it was only the beginning. Welcome to Translogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Today we're with Elon Musk. I think we all know who this guy is. We're at his rocket and spaceship company. 2002, you start SpaceX. Are you just thinking, yeah, space exploration. That's what I want to do. Uh, how did this idea come about for you? Uh, well, I've been interested in space for, for a long time. Okay. Uh, basically, for, from when I was in college, uh, there were three areas that I thought would most affect the future of humanity. Uh, one was the internet, another one was sustainable energy, and the third was space exploration, but okay. particularly making life multiplanetary. As a result of some success I had in the inter internet world, it gave me the capital to start a rocket company, which is obviously a pretty high capital endeavor. So some of the things you guys have developed here would be the Falcon rocket and the Dragon spacecraft. How are these different and better than what we had before? Compared to the shuttle, the shuttle had a per flight cost of about a billion dollars. The Falcon 9 Dragon system is about an eighth of the cost, it's maybe 120, 130 million dollars. It will also be able to carry seven passengers like the shuttle. Not as much cargo, but now that the space station is, uh, is assembled, there's no need to ha carry space station modules up. So it re represents a huge cost savings relative to the shuttle. Dollars wise, you guys are going to be looking at about $1,000 per pound. What does that dollar figure mean? Um, yeah, for, for a long time, uh, people have thought of as the, the, the $1,000 a, a pound to orbit has been kind of this, uh, you know, the equivalent like the four minute mile. I was going to say, yeah, the you four know, minute mile, um, yeah. Typically, people have thought of uh, access to space, well, depending upon where you're going, it's more like $10,000 a pound. With the Falcon Heavy rocket that we plan to launch in 2013, that rocket will actually break the $1,000 a pound barrier. That'll be a, a huge milestone in the history of space. The holy grail of rocketry is to have a, a rapid and completely reusable rocket system. Reusability is incredibly important to invent, but I want to be precise about that. What, what matters is rapid and complete reusability. You know, you don't change the wings out on an aircraft in between flight. In a normal flight, you don't expect to do anything except refuel and add, you know, change passengers or something. And they'll add more uh, pretzels and crackers. Right, exactly. Add, yeah. add the snacks and passengers, <laughs> fuel, and off you go again. Yeah, yeah. We need to get to something like that for rocketry. But we've got something that works, the math works, simulation works. Yeah. But this is an incredibly difficult thing, so we're not saying Definitively, we will achieve it, but we are saying definitively we'll attempt it and that we think we've got something that'll work. So as far as a lot of the stuff that's around here, you guys manufacture a majority of it. The main reason that we've done so much uh, of the rocket internally is that you can't really advance the technology if you're just using the same bits and pieces that everybody else is. All the other rockets were designed in the 90s, 80s, or the Soyuz, they were designed in the 60s. Almost everything about our rocket is new and different. One of the examples is for our primary airframe, we use friction stir welded aluminum lithium. The challenge with aluminum lithium is it's difficult to join. There actually wasn't a machine in the world that could do that, so we had to design the machine that could manufacture the rocket. It actually plunges a special pin into the metal. It's rotating at high speed with a lot of force. That friction turns the boundary into a putty-like state. It's not liquid. Once it's passed over the joint, it's as though there was never a joint there to begin with. When are you guys gonna put people in and get them up in space? In about three years. It's gonna take us a couple years to develop and test a launch escape system. If something goes wrong with the rocket, there are escape thrusters that are built to the sidewall of the Dragon spacecraft that can fire and take the Dragon spacecraft away from the rocket okay. and take it to safety. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Are we landing on Mars in your lifetime? SpaceX could be able to take people to Mars as soon as uh, 10 years. 10 years? Wow. I mean, that's kind of a best case scenario, but I'd say worst case scenario would be 20 years. Okay. Are you first? Are the Russians first? Well, who's, who's getting there? Well, it's definitely not the Russians. The Russians aren't really even trying. 
The Russians really have not developed a new rocket since the fall of the Soviet Union. It's possible that China will. I mean, China's okay. making good progress. And from a SpaceX standpoint, long term, we sort of see China as, as our only potential competitor. That just seems kind of incredible to me that, that a huge government organization like NASA couldn't come up with the stuff that, that you've done. Well, in general, the government is not the best entity to do any kind of optimization or efficiency. As soon as you're talking about wanting to rapidly innovate on, on technology and high efficiency, that's where the private sector is best. Well, best of luck. Thanks. Uh, we think you're fantastic. So, right, Elon, well, thanks thank so you. much for your time. Thanks for having me. All Thank right. you.